Bargani riches. Oh, oh! I was about to end the stream. I was about to end it. It is 5, 11 a.m. on the East Coast. And I'm fresh out of the shower. Let's get this day started. It's Wednesday. And I'm going to go ahead and put my toner on. I'm trying to hurry up and use this toner. That's one thing I never really use up is a toner. It seems like every time I get a toner, it takes forever to use that last little piece. This toner came from China, so I'm not going to get any more. So I'm trying to hurry up and use this last little bit up. But this last little bit keeps going and going and going. How y'all doing today? It is Wednesday, April the 3rd. Wake up, everybody. No more sleeping in bed. No more backwards thinking. Time for thinking ahead. <laughs> so that's one serum. If I don't do nothing else, I'm going to get my skincare in for the day. Ooh. Whoa, Nelly. Got my coffee real quick. Drinking it cold today. Time for the next serum. Oh, is it? Girl, I can't even get a Kona. I can't even get a Kona out of here. Oh, well, I guess that's a good thing. Uh, let me go into, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? It's me in the flesh. We're going live. We're going live. And look, y'all see the eyebrow? If you watched my video yesterday, I put this eyebrow stuff on yesterday. I have taken a shower, washed my face. Still got brow, still got lashes. I lost one. One lash on the end, which I knew I was gonna lose. So I just pulled the other one off. So it could be the same on both sides. Thank you so much for all the people who watch my replays. I really appreciate it. I've been gone for a while. Now I'm back with the jump off. You know, I had to get settled. Your girl been through some things, okay? I've had some major life changes. Major. And there were times when I really didn't know what was going to happen. I'm going into my refrigerator. To see if I can get me another serum. Yeah. Young ladies and gentlemen, this is why I encourage you when it's Christmas time and everybody be having all the sales, get what you're going to need for the whole year. And this one, act like this, this suction ain't working. I'm going to take the suction off this old one. And put it on here because oh is it because my juice is cold and it don't want to come out okay now we're getting somewhere this is the discoloration and I usually just keep that from here down because when COVID hit I had a bad case of mask acne. And it was all down here. I had like five cystic zits down here when COVID came. When COVID came out. Can we still not say that? Oh. Mm -mm. So today is a big day. I have been nervous 
all week. But today is the day where I have to teach a class. And I'm nervous as crap. So it's five o'clock in the morning and I don't have to be there. Class doesn't start till two. <laughs> Let me just start there. It's five o'clock in the morning. Class don't start till two. But um, I am putting my moisturizer on. But I am on call for my job this week. So I still have customers reaching out to me for various issues. So I still got to clock in to work at my normal time. But how y'all doing out there? How are y'all retired folks doing out there? <laughs> One of my colleagues retired. And she started going on trips. And I think she, she went to Africa about three times now, maybe. In less than two years. <laughs> and that's exciting. But it's also sad in a way that you have to wait till you get ready to retire to start to enjoy life. And y'all look, I have a list of stuff that I like to talk about on my videos. I didn't have my notebook in my room. This is my notebook from yesterday. I had about um, eight things. And... I think I I talked about all the eight but one. But uh, this is my list for the day because I had to, uh, I couldn't find my notebook. And uh, <laughs> that was not even on the list. So how y'all doing? How are all my family that watch my videos? Thank you so much for your support. It goes a long way. A view, a thumbs up helps me a long way. I created my YouTube channel over 10 years ago. And this is actually my second channel. And I'm thinking about rebranding my older channel because I don't want to lose the videos on that channel, so I need to start making some content for it. But it is connected to an old address, actually an address that's been spammed so many times. I need to figure out, oh, I think I did. I moved that channel to a new address, but the account that keeps up with your views and all that. I don't even know if they still use those accounts with Google. I got to see if I still need to switch that over. AdSense, that's what it is. I need to check and see if I need... I have not logged into Ad, AdSense since I moved into the high-rise apartments. And that's been about four years ago. So it may have been about seven years since I ever logged into AdSense. Y'all tell me, do AdSense still work? Do you still have to have an AdSense account? If so, I need to switch mine to um, a new email address. So, I was talking about the lady at work. Now, I'm sure she went on other vacations, but she's taken monumental trips since she's been retired. And I just want to encourage you today, that if you are still working like I am every day, don't wait. Take your time off, okay? Even if you're not working anymore, take some time 
and enjoy the flowers of life. Because, as they say, tomorrow ain't promised to nobody. You better live today. You better live today. <laughs> so, what I thought I would start off with today is, y'all, I don't know what I'm going to do. Just between me and you, look at this head. I got to fix this. So I can go in somebody's classroom. But I'm nervous on YouTube because I might not get it right. <sighs> See, when I start thinking about it, I'm getting ready to break out in a sweat. And my hair appointment is April, to, April the 9th. Y'all, today April the 3rd. I did not know. I did not plan my hair appointments right. I did not plan it right. <laughs> Could go in just like this. Which, I don't think it looks bad. I'm on my Zoom calls like this. I'm on my Zooms. <laughs> I live in an urban neighborhood, so... Most of the people look like this, too. So, I'm conflicted. Should I stay true to who I am? Or should I slick my edges down, put my hair up in a bun, do all this and that? I'm conflicted. Yesterday, I was like, no, I'm going to show up as my authentic self. I know I'm not going to be the only one there who has some little baby locks. Um, my hair is clean. Clean as a whistle. I could go like this. Look at my face, y'all. I think the next time I do a video, I'm going to have to have this fan going. I don't know... If it's the lights or what it is, but as soon as I sit right here, I start feeling it. And look, I want to make sure I'm smelling good and everything. So I was getting ready to put on some shea butter or some thickening body butter. Then I remembered how many pieces of clothes I have ruined by putting on my lotion first, or my shea butter first, or my oil first, and then putting clothes on. But I found a solution recently, and it works. If you get you some Murphy's oil soap, that will take an oil stain out of your clothes. Murphy's oil soap. Let it soak on about five or ten minutes. Then throw it in the washer. Well, I slept with my earrings on last night, so I'm not going to change these. It might as well be the X's and O's earrings. <sighs> like, I don't have to do anything, really, to my brows. My lashes are already done, so... I guess I can spend some time on hair. You know what I mean? Some of my stuff I did earlier this week, I don't really have to worry about it. Yeah. Like my lashes, I don't have to do nothing but straighten them up. And my brows, I didn't have to do nothing with them today. Let me show you that product I found. This is day number two. It's called NYX Zero to Brow. This stays on multiple days. Like, I put this on yesterday and woke up this morning on my brows and it's already, my brows are done. Long wear gel. And I put it on my hand one day and I know it was about three days I took showers and it still didn't come off my hand. And that's when I said, wait a minute. I might want to get some more of this because look, if it had my eyebrows done for three days, I don't have to worry about it. Yes, this is the thing right here. 
but you gotta be careful about it because it, it comes on it it applies real heavy and I'm, I'm I think I'm learning that they really want you to put it on your hairs but I got a, a, a space and a space right here that's bald on my eyelashes so there's no hair for me to put it on but once you put it on, I take a brush to diffuse it through so it don't look so harsh. Except for the spots that I don't have no hair, I need that. I need it. Which just reminds me, if you got, oh my gosh, I'm getting ready to get the girls a clue. I'm getting ready to get the girls a clue, okay? If you got thin edges, you can put some of this right up in here, which I don't have thin edges. <laughs> but um, if you have thin edges, you can put some of this up here and it'll last a few days. I, oh, I can't wait. I'm going to make a short with this. I'm going to make a short with this. But this is the product again and it stays on a couple of days. It's by NYX. Okay, so... Y'all, let's start with a black history fact for today. Oh, I just touched something I want to talk about too, but we're going to start with the black history fact, okay? I found an Instagram clip about the gentleman who invented the doorknob. Who knew? He was 17 years old and an African American. In the 1800s, he invented the doorknob. Let me play this video and see if you can hear it. Born in September 1861, according to emancipation records, and was freed at eight months old with his mom and two siblings during the Civil War. Little else is known about Dorsey's life prior to this groundbreaking invention. However, it should be noted that in the 1880 census, when Dorsey was 18 or 19 years old, he worked as a butcher and resided with his family. In other words, Dorsey didn't make a fortune from his invention. In fact, it took years for people to embrace the doorknob. But after they realized that it was safer than opening doors with latches and leather straps, like what was usually done, the broader society got on board. So the next time you twist that doorknob and walk through a door, you can thank a black man. His name was um, Osborne Dorsey. And in 1878, in Washington, D.C., he invented the doorknob. He was likely born in 1861, so he was only 17 years old. He was freed as a slave at eight months old with his mom and two siblings during the war. And even though he invented the doorknob at 17, he was working as a meat butcher at 18 and 19, which meant he didn't make any money off of his invention or his invention was probably stolen from him. But after, uh, it took people years to embrace the doorknob. So he was way ahead of his time. Imagine teenagers now. They are way ahead of our time right now. And be sure to support and pour into those teenagers because nobody believed in his doorknob when he was 17. It said it took them years later to embrace the doorknob. They was opening doors with leather straps and belts. Oh, I can't wait to see if I can't find a picture of how they used to open the door. Um, but after they realized it offered them better safety than opening doors with latches and leather straps, the broader society got on board. So yeah, that was um, Osborne Dorsey. So if you have any young people in your family that need to do a report on somebody, I have never heard of Osborne Dorsey. That may be a good person to do a story on. So. I've been wasting time. Oh, this is what I wanted to talk about. So I got up this morning. Today is trash day. So I had to um, take the trash out. 
I did get up earlier. I got up at 3.30 this morning. So I'm getting back on my getting up early grind. Uh, normally when I wake up at 3.30, I'll lay around till 4. I'll pop up at 4 o'clock and I'll walk the treadmill. I didn't do it today because I'm caught up. I'm caught up in my feelings because I got to go teach today. I got to go outside the home and teach a class today. It's for a second chance program at work and it's teaching people about computer literacy. So I'm kind of in my, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. So I didn't get up and get on the treadmill. I did get up and take my shower, okay. So I'm gonna be nice and clean. So I took the trash out first and then I took the shower. Well, right before I was getting ready to take the shower, I grabbed this. And I said, you know what? These folks ain't heard me. These folks ain't heard me about this Geritol, okay? I remember my grandparents talking about Geritol years ago. And over 30 years ago. So this is my second order of Geritol. It come in a three pack on Amazon. This stuff is good, good. It's good. So I wanted to, I don't even have my glasses in here, but I can see it a little bit. I wanted to look at the back and see what the ingredients were when I first got it. And I realized it's nothing but a bunch of vitamin Bs, some iron, some niacin, some thymine, riboflavin. But it's mostly a bunch of vitamin Bs and iron. And it's in liquid form. And you know it's got to work because they keep the bottle dark. Okay? Anytime a supplement keeps the bottle dark, it's because they want to make sure that they keep the um, purities of the vitamins fresh. Y'all better go to Amazon. Get you some Geritol. You ain't got to worry about it staying all up in your intestines, not breaking down because it's liquid. So I took my Geritol. Mm, mm, mm. What am I do with my hair? What am I do with my hair? So I think I am gonna try to put it up in a halo. So the first thing I do is I just wet my little edges. And I'm gonna put some gel on it and I'm gonna tie it down. I'm gonna make me a little halo going around rolled up. But why you can't find nothing? Why you can't find nothing though? So See what we're gonna talk about. I need to hurry up too. Um, I just found out this morning that on the day the key bridge was hit, two other bridges was hit the same day. One bridge caught fire or fire, and one bridge was damaged, wasn't knocked all the way down. I said, Wow, that's crazy. One was in, in Oklahoma, called the Oklahoma Bridge. And one was called the 480 Bridge, is the one that burned. Oh, maybe I can do a hybrid of this style. Like right now, I'm just slicking some edges down. Just doing a little slick for the people. Maybe I'll slick the edges and then I'll think about what I really want to do to the rest of the hair later. Because y'all look, the slick could be it. <sighs> Notification. The slick can be it for the day. I'm going to put a little, I'm going to band for an hour. If anybody know who that is, I'm going to fight you. <laughs> hey, Pew. 
If anybody know who the girl is that say ban for an hour. <laughs> Yo, I just be wanting to wear a wig just so I can say ban for an hour. <laughs> Now this E came the um TikTok sensation. I started watching her on um TikTok, but now I think in less than a month she got a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube. So now she taking over our platform. She's the YouTube sensation, E came. And she is a famous wig influencer. She's in her twenties. And I think I told y'all this yesterday, but um, I might not rock with your content. Like, I don't wear wigs, but she vlogs her real life. I check into the real life. It's strange. Like, I might not want to know about your knitting and your yarn. But as soon as you post something about, uh, oh, yeah. There was a whole scandal about the, uh, there was a whole craft scandal not too long ago. I'd be all up in the, the, <laughs> the knitting and the yarn community trying to figure out about this scandal. Oh yeah, from what I can remember not too long ago, it was a knitting, is it a knitting or yarn convention? And Lord, I didn't know they even did stuff like that. But there was a convention where all the people came together to sell their wares and talk about, you know, like a festival. Same thing we do for art and all types of stuff. The organizer, did she switch venues at the last minute? It was just a bunch of stuff going on. And they end up getting a place but the place that they got to have the event, it almost sounded like a New York walk-up. If you know anything about New York, there's a lot of places in New York where you have to walk up set different floors to see different things. Like, you know, a two-story, a five-story walk-up. Like, or maybe it's just me. <laughs> but um, the place she rented for this yarn convention, and I might not be saying the words right, was a walk up. It was pouring down raining on the convention. And there were people who were on canes and walkers trying to go to this convention. There were vendors going to this convention who didn't even have a place to park. Like, it was a whole thing. Like, I watched people's videos for days about this convention. Y'all, I was so disappointed to see that the lady put it together was one of our folks' child. And, um, <laughs> them folks put her on blast. Okay, they was like, you know, the tickets was a little bit more, you know, higher than what they normally are. And she had us in a place where half the people couldn't get up. The, the food was up like three or four floors. The elevator didn't work. It was like they put all the business out there. And I said that to say this. I know people do specific content. Like, I like to journal my hair so I can go back and see from where I started to where it's at. But when I, when I look at people on YouTube, if I'm more interested in their real life. So, <clears throat> that was, I done went into a bunch of different stories, but that's what I found out about the day that the key bridge went down. There were two other bridges on that same day one was burned a little bit and one was damaged a little bit the same day. One in Oklahoma and one called the 408 Bridge. Y'all, now I already got my direction set for my navigation system. No highways. Yeah, because I live in the city now, so I do no highways. 
I gotta see if they got a setting that says no bridges. <laughs> because I can imagine, like, you know, most of these bridges been up for all our lives. When you see somebody maintenance the bridges, I don't I don't even know nobody that's got a job that maintenance the bridges. Okay, so ban for an hour. That's what she said for the wigs. You have to ban for an hour. So I'm going to let this stay on. And if I take this off and my locks are looking proper without me putting them up in a bun, I'm going to let them be free today. Um, I was telling everybody that thank you so much for the thumbs up, man, Pam. You know, most people don't be up this time of morning. But years ago, this was us. Early in the morning, child, early in the morning, I used to be up doing my thing before I went out of the house for work. So, um, I was talking about I got an older YouTube channel that's got content on it. And I really want to save my content. So, I'm thinking about bringing that channel back. I don't want YouTube to delete my videos. They're doing all types of stuff now. As a matter of fact, I saw another content creator I haven't seen in a long time came back. But she might have got the message that they was going to delete your channel for inactivity. I don't know. Let me tell y'all about it's another thing I heard about. Y'all know I be up in, all up in people bushes. <laughs> Nip neck patty wagon. <laughs> all up in people's bushes. I heard about a scam going on on the Facebooks. Don't look for me. I closed my Facebook about three weeks ago. I do not have a Facebook. Um, but there's a scam going on and they're targeting influencers. Huge influencers because they know that big influencers, a lot of times, they don't even operate their social media. You know, they got other people doing stuff. So I have heard two stories where um, influencers' accounts have been hacked. I just heard one this morning. This morning, a guy named Anthony has hundreds of thousands of subscribers on YouTube. I didn't know his Instagram was booming too because I mean his Facebook was booming too because I'm not on Facebook like that. But he said this is what happened. Somebody came in his inbox on um, Facebook and said, hey, we want to do a show with you. And you know, what's your amount? We're going to pay you such and such and such and such. So they broker in a deal for an appearance, which I guess is normal. If you're a big uh, social media influencer, for them to, for you know, you to get deals on social media and stuff like that, so they said we want you to come on a Zoom. We're gonna pay you so many thousands of dollars. He said sure. While he on the Zoom, child, the person that invited him to the Zoom did not cut their camera on. He said that was the first indication that something was weird. Like you invited me to a Zoom, but you don't even cut your camera on. First, he took the invitation, but <laughs> he gets on the Zoom, but it happens sometime like this if you're a big influencer and you got other people running your social media, they probably get these invitations all the time and they just negotiate the deal and book their talent. So that's basically what happened. Somebody booked the deal for him. He showed up. All he got to do is show up for the Zoom day. But the guy who who um, hired him didn't cut his camera on. While they was doing the Zoom, child, they was charging up this man's charge card on Facebook. Because a lot of times, influencers pay for ads on Facebook. Which means you may have your business credit card hooked up to your Facebook. So this is how they are scamming influencers they know that a lot of times you have a staff they know that you pay for ads 
and they know that your credit cards is probably hooked up to Facebook. So for us normal people, get your bank cards and stuff off of Facebook. <laughs> get your bank cards and stuff off of Facebook. That's what this is telling me. The same reason why I took my stuff off of Cash App. It's too many scams. It's too many scams going on. Too many scams. And when I want to use Cash App, I link it back up real quick. But then I takes it right back off. I don't keep it. But yeah, there is a scam going on. I've heard two people. I heard a lady first. And this morning I heard a gentleman. They're targeting influencers. <clears throat> and what they do is they invite you to come on a Zoom or they book you for a deal. And when you get to the Zoom, they hacking into your account, stealing your credit card information, charging. The man that, that told his story this morning, they charged $40,000 on his business card. Or it could have been his bank card. I don't know. But on his card, they charged $40,000. It overdrew the card. But, um, you know, with cards, they gonna, they'll give you your money back and stuff like that. Oh, gosh. I'm sitting up here trying to tell a story. And I'm sorry I got to cut the fan back on because I'm, I'm getting ready to break out. I'm getting ready to really break out. They charge $40,000 on his card. And then he have the system called Aura, which I got that too. A-U-R-A. -A. It monitors all your personal information online. He got a notification saying that his business address and his name was being used to open up more cards. Y'all, more cards. So if you got any cards connected to Facebook, take them all, or put you a card on there that's one of them cards where you add money to it, don't put your, your debit card where you're going to need some money to go somewhere to the doctor or something. You go in there and they done took out the money and you can't do what you need to do. But I've heard two people. And I said, you know what? There is... The scammers know that there's so much vulnerability right there when you are a big influencer. You rely on your team. You know, like you have a team that books you. You have a team that do your... He said he called his advertisement lady. He got a team that do his ads. You know, there's a... And when you have a lot of teams and you have a lot of people doing work for you, there are some things that can slip through the loophole. And the scammers know this. They like, oh, all I got to do is get in touch with Sally and I can book this man to show up for this Zoom. And while we distracted him with this Zoom, y'all tap into his account and steal all his personal information. Y'all, it is crazy. Slow down, Renee. You're caking it on. You're caking it on too much. Ooh, let me slow down. I wanted, I'm doing too much. Ooh, and, and to some more mess. What's going on with the Jacksons of Atlanta? Do you know about them? I'm not in that sector, but I did tune in a couple of times when they had controversy going on. There's a channel called the Jacksons of Atlanta. There are a couple who sort of got famous because they had twins back to back. They had two sets of twins. And they sort of got known um, real quick on YouTube because of, you know, the miracles of having two sets of twins. They are actually going through a divorce right now or a separation. And I think their youngest is maybe six months, if that. So, like I said, I ain't gonna watch no kids 
you know, content or family content. I don't really watch it, but when it's a mess, <laughs> I be done tuned in. I be done tuned in when it's a mess to see what's going on. Child, I just found out the other day that they did not pay their videographer. So they had, you know, somebody that came over every day. Like, they put out videos every day. So they had somebody that came over every day to record them. And you can find a video on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Jacksons of Atlanta and videographer or didn't pay their worker. I'm sure it's going to come up. I, mean, I can't find my clear sitting powder. So I'm going to just I'm gonna put this Fenty on here first. I'll just put this Fenty right here for a second. This man said, you know what made me real mad for him? Was when he said one day he was supposed to get off early so he can go out of town. And they wouldn't let him leave. And one day he was supposed to have his lunch at 12 o'clock. They knew his lunch was at 12 o'clock and they ate in front of him and wouldn't let him go take his lunch. That really made me mad because I'm like, I can't imagine with my job now somebody not letting me take my lunch break. You know? John. <laughs> so... If y'all want some foolishness, <laughs> like I love some foolishness, <laughs> see what's going on with the Jacksons. And what made it so interesting recently is that the mother just posted a video says she's getting her Tesla built. You know, with Tesla, you go in, you sit down, and you talk to the agent about all the features you want added to your car. So it's almost like you're getting a car built. Sometimes they'll check and see if they got one coming in with all those features. But sometimes they have to order yours special to come in. Especially if you want, you know, the color, the tires, the self-driving. Like, you know that self-driving on a Tesla is anywhere from 7 to $9,000 added on to the price. I said, well, they ain't got to worry about me because I don't want nobody driving for me anyway. They ain't got to worry about me. But I did test one out. And honey, the car got 360 degree cameras all around it. You don't have to poke your head up or turn your head to see nothing. All you got to do is look at that control panel. You can see up under the car, behind the car, on the side of the car, what's on the front of your grill. You can see everything with a Tesla. Everything. You know, I had to be quiet on that right there. If you just now joining me, hey, hey y'all. I am, I got to teach a class today. So that's why I'm up early putting it on. Putting that shit on. I'm up early. I got to go out the house and teach a class. We, um, we have a computer literacy program where I work for second chance at life people. Which, you know, are some people who have been away for a time and come back into society. Our company gives them jobs. They need some education on how to use the technology. So that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Me and about six other people. And <laughs> I was talking to my mom last night and it was so funny because I was telling her, shoot, I don't know what I'll be doing half of the time. I had to learn this stuff on my own. <laughs> it's so crazy.
crazy. I didn't go to school for this. I had to learn it on my own. But I am a natural born teacher. I am a natural born teacher. I can take, I know, I can take complicated processes and systems and break it down so anybody can understand third grade. I know I can do that. I can teach anything. If I had to teach you how to make spaghetti, I could break it. I could teach a third grader how to make spaghetti. That's a talent I know I have. But <clears throat> I didn't know that. Um, I didn't know that I was going to have to teach people something that I'm not 100% comfortable with myself. I mean, some of the stuff is easy, like how to use a mouse, how to create a Word document. I've been doing it for years, but now I got to break it down and teach somebody else how to do it. <laughs> so yesterday, I was up while I was working, of course, writing out a script. And somebody was tell, asking me, you have to write out everything you're going to say? And as I'm sitting here with stuff I want to talk about for you too. <laughs> no, you don't have to. I don't have to write out everything I want to say. I have to put everything I want to say in a logical order. Okay. So let's say we're going to talk about emails, Word documents, and spreadsheets. Well, to me, I would teach you how to create a Word document, save it. And then we're going to email it. I'm teaching three things at one time. You see what I'm saying? So, no, I don't have to write down every word I'm going to say. I have to put it in logical order. Like, I have to build on a small topic, add another step to it, add another step to it. So, that at the end, we can see that we've done a lot. So, that's what I was um, really doing yesterday. And in between getting tickets from work... It took me all day to think about the process and everything and how I was going to present it. Like, how do you explain what a file is, what a folder is, what storage is? You know, stuff that we're so used to using every day. Like, I never had to explain what a file is. <laughs> so it dawned on me as I was thinking about this, remember back in the days when we had to go to work and we had an office that we had papers and folders and things on? Some people kept their papers in a file cabinet in a drawer. Some people kept piles of paper on their desk. And that's how I was going to explain. Storage is your desk. The piles are your files and the papers are I mean the piles are folders because you would have a pile here for your notes a pile for mileage a pile for expenses you know how we put piles of paper on the desk so piles would be folders and the papers in each pile are files I hope I explained it right but I took a picture of it and put it on a PowerPoint. So when I see that picture, that's going to help me explain the difference between files, folders, and storage. Because a lot of these people, they do walk around with a notebook and they're taking notes. They're not using the computer for things and I get it because let me tell you something I wrote my notes down on a piece of paper and this is for all the young people who got jobs who, who depend on the computer for everything it's good to have it on the computer too but you can never go wrong like if my PowerPoint go down if my overhead go down if I don't have no screen to display, this note, the class will go on. 
with, with the notes right here, we still gonna walk away and learn something today. I don't need all that extra stuff. <laughs> so I do understand that the computer have its place, but I also like, I learned this from the military. You always gotta have a backup. And I wasn't in the military, but I worked in the military hospital. You always gotta have a backup. And uh, I used to go into a lot of hospitals and train. And there were times when the overhead projector didn't work. I didn't have no microphone, didn't have no pointer, all that stuff didn't work. We still had class, okay? We still had class. Because as long as you could log into your computer, I can show you what it is you need to do. <laughs> I can show you what it, that's all I need. You to log into your computer. I'm teaching you how to do it. As long as you can log, log into your computer and I can point my fingers and I used to keep my script on a piece of paper. Years ago, I used to keep it on a piece of paper. No shame in my game. And that, and I never, never had to reschedule a class because of technical difficulty. We got through it. Because you got to think, the people that I teach take care of my family and your family. They're healthcare workers. So it ain't no excuses as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> You're going to get this work. <laughs> so yesterday it was so funny. I was like, this is back in the old days. I'm writing down my script. But I was really just breaking complex. Because I went to AI and asked them, uh, create a document to show me how to show somebody how to use a mouse. It came up to a two page document. I looked at that document and wrote three lines what the left click mean, what the right click mean, what the scroll mean. Moving on. <laughs> you can read all that stuff in your um, spare time. But for class, this is what we're going to go through. So I wrote hand notes to take the place of all those documents that I'm going to give the um, students. So that's why I'm up early this morning. I'm up early anyway. Yeah, I woke up at 3.30. I'm up early anyway. And normally I get on my treadmill and walk, but I didn't do that today because my nerves, and that's why I got nerves. I got to teach a class. But I think this is all going to be the makeup for the day. I'm not going to do a whole lot because y'all know how I be breaking out in sweats and stuff. So I'm not going to do a whole lot. And y'all look into that Ahmad Aubrey case. That case is still going on. That's the case where the young black guy was jogging through his neighborhood. And some white gentlemen just, I guess they thought he didn't belong in the neighborhood. And they killed him. That case is still going on because people are paying for them to appeal, appeal, or whatever they call it when you go back and do the case over again. The family is really hurting. They said because not only did y'all take their family member but they have to continue to keep going to court over and over again because keep getting donations so they can appeal their case where they hunted this gentleman down and killed him just for jogging in the neighborhood and it was almost like a witch hunt because an extra neighbor came out. It started out with a father and a son. And then an extra man came out of his house and jumped in. So y'all got these 40, 50, 60 year old people out here acting a fool. They like, this the first time in our life we could do something like this. Beating a man down, killing a man just for taking a morning jog. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all, thank you so much for tuning in to my channel. This is, I am going live every day for the month of April. So I can get used to doing live videos and I don't have to be stumbled on editing. I'm so sick of editing. 
<laughs> and interestingly enough, when I came to YouTube, that was the thing I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn a new skill. I wanted to learn how to edit. Now I'm sick of editing. So I'm trying to go live every day for the month of April. And I'm going to just niche my time out early in the morning. You can catch me early in the morning. Okay? Y'all have a safe day. I will see you on my next live video. Peace, riches.